order to subscribe for my channel please click here or click here please like share and comments on my videos and channel thank you hey guys this is Gaurav welcome to SAS with ServiceNow this is our follow-up session of ServiceNow service catalog training before I start, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Gaurav Tripathi. I have 9.5 years of experience in IT with 6.5 years of experience in ServiceNow architect solutions and project delivery. In this session, we are going to talk about variables. What are we going to learn? What are variables, types of variables, create different types of variables, and then additional variables, configurations, and functionality. The first point is what are variables? So service catalog variables capture and pass on information about choices a customer makes when ordering a catalog item. It's just kind of information if you are creating a catalog item and you want end users to fill some of the information, those are the things or variables. Variables are user input on information which are displayed to the user for the catalog item. As an example, this is one of the catalog item form which user can request and this is request to provision a new database. Now in order to get this request for a particular team, you want some information from end user so that you can fulfill his request. Now that data is variable. So for example, who is the primary contact? that who will be the primary contact that you can select here and then we have what cost center will be built. Now, this is another variable where he can select as a reference field. He can select that cost center as well, which is already existed in service now. And then we have this radio buttons where you can select the what is the business purpose. So you have already mentioned this is not dynamic. It is static. Whatever fields you can see, he can select from these options. Now, these all three things, all three inputs are variables. Now, there can be some other variables as well, which are just like informative. Maybe you might not need to get some input from the user, but if you just want to display something to your end user, and we will learn later that what are those variables as well. Types of variables. So the important part of variables are that you have to learn about the different types of variables. Because when you create a catalog item, it depends the kind of input you are looking for from an end user. It can be a string, it can be a number, it can be a uh, email address, it can be IP address, it can be a data which is which has already existed in your system. So ServiceNow head design has come up with those variables so that you can utilize those variables on your catalog item form so that your users can uh, provide the input and you can create the different type of catalog items as per the requirement from your product owners, customers and clients. So starting with the first variable we have is break. Now break adds a line. So if you want to add a line on your catalog form, you can utilize this break variable. The next variable we have is checkbox. So if you want to give an opportunity to your users to select some checkbox, in that case you can select the checkbox variable. And this is like, for example, you can see if your user is requesting for a laptop. So user has requested for a laptop, but at the same time, you want to give an opportunity to the user so that he can select some, some by default softwares in his laptop. And that's, that's the reason it says optional software and he can select it. Then we have some other variables and these are really important variables and which has really good functionalities and those are container start, container split and container end. Now these are three different variables. Now the reason to create these variables, it's something if you want to put some of the variables in a bucket. In that case, you can utilize containers variables. Like you can see, as of now on your form, we have the CPU speed and memory in left and right side. In this case, this is being done with the help of container start and end split. The next variable we have is date. If you want users to input some date, in that case, you will select the variable as date. Then you have date and time. So if you want users to fill date and time both, in that case, you can select this type of variable, that is date and time. 
then you have duration so if you want users to fill in the duration it's it depends and you want to calculate something or you want to make it read only as well and you want to calculate it uh, on the form itself in that case you can use this duration field then we have email so if you want users to fill in some email address in that case you can use this email variable then we have HTML so if you want users to fill some HTML format like they, they type something you want some input in HTML if I if I give an example the best example would be your uh, knowledge body if you want them to fill in the knowledge body in that case you can utilize this HTML variable as well then we have IP address so if you want users to fill IP address for any router or for any network you want their IP address in that case they can uh, they can put their IP address here then we have label now this is similar to brick it adds a line but in brick you don't have any name in label you have that name as well and then there is a line automatically comes in so you can see it says complete your request that's a label and below that you have a big line long line basically then we have list collector now if you want users to select multiple options multiple records from a particular table in that case you can give this option for example if you want to add multiple users in a group in that case you don't want just to give an opportunity to select only one user so you have to give that opportunity to the user so that he can select multiple values in that case he can select multiple uh, users in this particular window and this is just like a slush bucket now just just i just want to tell you one thing that i will explain you each and every variable that how you create it how exactly it is being shown to the end users we will do it in our later sections then we have lookup multiple choice now this is something related to for whenever you heard here about lookup that means that first it will look up for that particular records in a table and then it will display to the users so if you have some records and and you have some kind of requirement that you want to select it from that particular table in that case you can show right here with the help of lookup multiple choice and these are like radio buttons so whenever you will hear multiple choice variable in service catalog they will be like radio buttons then we have lookup select box so as we know in our native form like in incident change problem we have a choice field where you can see the different choices now similarly we have this lookup select but this is lookup this is not just a select box not just a choice field this is lookup basically you can refer a table and it will fetch the records and it will display like this all the records of of that particular table and you can select it and you can give an opportunity to your end users then we have macro now any variable which is not available and you want to display uh, uh, some kind of functionality to your end users like this in that case you will create it with a macro so you have to create ui macros and then you have to refer those macros in your service catalog variable and so users can see like this in your catalog item form then we have masked this is also another type of variable and it basically used when you have to write in the password or any encrypted value basically mostly you use it for a password because you don't want to show the password on the screen so that is how it will be used then we have multi-line text multi-line text is something if you want users to input uh, a long like a lot of details in that case you can select multi-line text variable then we have multiple choices as you can see this is also radio button so if you want to show users with some choices in that case you can select these these kind of this kind of variable that is multiple choice then we have numerical scale and if you get the requirement that user have to fill in some kind of numerical values that you can use numerical scale and as an example says how well did we do it's just kind of a survey you want to take in that case you can you can uh, put uh, select the numerical scale uh, variable 
then we have reference now as you have reference field on your native form like incident change problem similarly if you want to add a similar kind of field on your service catalog item form in that case you have to select the reference field and you have to refer that table so that users can select that record then we have select box it is similar to the choice field where you can add different choices and user can select it as per the select box that's the reason it is select box it is similar to multiple choice but multiple choice shows you the radio buttons and here it shows you the select box then we have single line text it's similar to like short description so if you want single line text if you want first name last name in that case you can display like this so you will use single line text variable then we have ui page now similar to ui macro if you want to show some extra information to your end user in that case you can utilize you can have to create a ui page and then you can refer that ui page in your variable so that it will be displayed to your end user the next variable we have is url so the url variable is something if you want to enter the url from your end user then in that case you can select the url type of variable and then we have wide single line text so single line text has some limitations to the characters but if you want to increase that uh, value in that case you can select wide single line text like short description then we have yes and no so if you just want to take the input from the end user in yes and no in that case you can select yes and no variable type 